Hello and welcome. My name is Dwayne Robinson, and I'm here today to show you how to use custom question answering as a knowledge search with Power Virtual Agents. We'll be focusing on the new public preview uh, version of Power Virtual Agents. So the first thing we want to do with Power Virtual Agents is create a new bot. And so we'll just create a new preview bot and we'll name it. Click Create, and we'll wait for the bot to go through the process of being revisioned. Now that my bot's created, I can go over and I can click on topics and I can see the list of topics. We're going to look at the system topic and specifically the fallback topic. As you'll see here, this is what happens when the bot doesn't know what to, what to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new topic. And that new topic, we're just going to call it KB Lookup. And the purpose of this is that I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some logic here to be able to go out and I, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to actually create a flow that connects to my implementation of custom question answering. So for me to do that, what I will need to do is I'll have to uh, leave this for now and come over to, to flow, which it will open a new tab in your browser. And you'll see here that we have a way to add an input. So we're going to add an input and that input, we're going to name that uh, text variable as KB question. The next step is going to be that I need to actually add an additional action. And the additional action that I want to add is I need to go through and I need to actually initialize a variable. With this, I'm going to set a variable for KB answer, and then I'm going to take and make sure that that's set as a string. The next step is I need to add an additional action. This additional action that I'm doing here is I'm going to actually look up into in my question and answering service inside of Language Studio. So I need to generate an answer from a project, but know that this is where you'll need to flip over to Language Studio and know the name of your knowledge base. So we'll click into the knowledge base that I've already created. And I'm going to look here and I have got it where I already have, I need an answer and a question and answer pair. So I'm going to add an additional one here. So in this case, I'm going to add, what is your name? And then I'm going to add a response. Now, beyond this, you can add metadata and things of that nature, but in this case, I'm just going to check the box, and then I'm going to go, and I'm actually going to submit this in to my knowledge base. Now, you'll notice that you don't see the answer because of the fact that one of the things that you need to do is you need to actually save the changes. So I'm going to click on Save Changes, and now I've successfully gone through the process of adding an additional item to my knowledge base, and you can see it here. Now, another thing to be aware of, if you need to look up in Azure where the endpoint or your key, you can find your key here and your endpoint here. Now, back over in Language Studio, make sure you take note of the fact that it's called TestDB because you need to enter in the project name, which is the name of the knowledge base, which is here. For the question, I'm going to leverage the dynamic content here because I need to grab what I, uh, the actual question that was asked, which is a string of text coming in from Power Virtual Agents. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a new action. And in this new action, what I'm looking to add here is to apply a, a, I would need to apply a condition to each because what's going to happen is it's going to generate back 
maybe a list of responses. So this is how we're going to go through and actually make sure that what we get is we want to look not at the answer text, but all the list of answers that are being returned from the service. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say from that list, I want to grab that. And then I need to add another sub action. And the sub action that I'm going to do here is I need to set a variable. And in this case, what I'm wanting to do is I need to set a variable of, of the KB answer variable that we initialized earlier. And I need to set it to the value that came back. And so in this case, I'm going to choose the answer, not answers, as you can see here. This will allow us to be able to say that we're setting the answer with the very first item in the list. Now, now that we've done that, I need to go and add an additional action to my flow. And that is going to be that we're going to initialize yet another variable. And in this case, I'm going to set it to a string. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to take the output here. And I'm going to set it to the actual KB answer. So this allows me to do to actually set that variable to that very first thing or that we did before. So now we're going to basically have it where we get the final answer defined. And then we're going to insert it with the answer that came from uh, our apply to each above. Now, the last step here is to make sure that I go in and I set uh, the return value, which is going to be the KB answer, and I want it to be the final, final answer. This will make sure that what you get is you get back a single response and not a list of response, responses from the knowledge base. Now, now that I've done that, I have to make sure that I save it. But be aware that you might want to change the name here from the default name to something familiar so that you can see it later. So we're just going to go ahead and make that change. Now that we've done that, we save it once again, and we can move back once this is saved, back over to Power Virtual Agents. Now, in Power Virtual Agents before, I didn't save my uh, topic, so I'm just going to create uh, yet again another new topic. I don't need to set any trigger phrases here, but it is important to set the name. And so we're just gonna call this KB Lookup again. Now, what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to make sure that we can call the action that we just built. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call the KB knowledge lookup value, and then we need to send it the string of text that the person typed. Now you can click on the system topic and get the activity.txt, which will send the last text that you typed into the bot and the topic in. And then we're going to return the knowledge base answer as a string here. So the next step that we want is we want to make sure that we handle any type of condition that we might want to think about. In this case, what we're going to do is make sure that it actually returns data. So what we're going to do is look at the KB answer va value needs to not be blank. Now, assuming that it's not blank, the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we provide the response back to the user. Now, in order to make sure that we don't continue on through additional things in the fallback topic, I also want to go ahead and end all topics here. So now what I have is I've built a, a knowledge lookup topic that is triggered by nothing, but now we're going to go wire this in. Now, important thing is don't forget to save. Now, all I have to do is clip over to my system tab go to the fallback provider or the fallback topic and insert my topic that I just created, which is the KB lookup topic here. Now that I've done this, I need to make sure that I save it. And now we're ready to test. Now, I meaningly left some, a step out here to make sure that you can see what the result would be 
if this wasn't working properly. So if I type, what is your name? And I happen to get a response, which is no answer found, which means that what has happened is I've fallen back. So what we need to do is we forgot one step. So let's go back and fix this. What happened was we didn't get a returned response. So why did we not get the return response? Well, the reason that we didn't get it is because we have to also not just save, but also deploy the, um, the knowledge base so that that way the, the bot project can actually use the knowledge base changes that we made uh, from the original input. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this inside of Language Studio. I'm sorry, deploy this. And this can take a second, but you'll see that now it's successfully deployed. Now, if I go back to my test canvas, notice I'm not even resetting the conversation. Just going to type the name, the what is your name statement again. And this time, you'll see that I actually got the response that we expected. So this concludes my demonstration of how to be able to build this. And I hope that uh, this was very helpful for everyone. Have a great day.